So in this video, I'm gonna cover everything you need to know about dating in Thailand as a foreigner. This includes how I had over a thousand girls saying they wanted to meet me before I even stepped foot in the country. How to make sure you are not one of the unlucky few who gets screwed over and gets both your bank account and your heart broken and bled dry, leaving you as a broken, poor, crying little mess in the middle of the bathroom floor. <laughs> To be clear, I am not making this video to try to empower the douchebag who simply wants to come here and rattle through a million birds feeding a little ego at the expense of vulnerable women because you're unable to find fulfillment within yourself. No, this is for the person who is legitimately looking to make great human connections and potentially a long-term partner. I'm also gonna share with you the absolute biggest thing that you can do to attract more women to you and potentially find the partner of your dreams. Overall, this video today is gonna to cover as much as humanly possible about dating here in Thailand. Are we going? Okay. One of the great things about spending a bit of time in Phuket is these awesome beachfront uh, little co-working spaces and coffee shops. This one's called Flamingo and it's like a beachfront restaurant and a co-working space as well. And it's literally a 60 second walk from the villa up there. It's just an absolute dream. I'm actually going on a date. Pretty fucking crazy, like how much attention you get. Do Thai girls have a preference when it comes to foreigners? Now, before we kick off, there is something I want to share. And that's if you're simply looking to hook up, then this video isn't for you. It isn't that by watching what's in this video, it isn't gonna help you hook up because it absolutely will. It's just that it's painful to watch so many guys come over here to Thailand and do a disservice to their own being, riddled by feelings of inadequacy and unworthiness. They try to find a sense of belonging deep inside the depths of adolescent Thai poon tank. Now I've talked about how Thailand is an opportunity to reinvent yourself anew. However, too many people here reinvent a giant fucking douchebag. Okay, they go from getting basically no female attention back home to coming to Thailand and because of their egos, it's so fragile, right? And sense of worthiness so shallow, they end up just banging everything in sight because they think this will give them a sense of fulfillment. People feel so unworthy to feel desired is desirable. But often their self-image hasn't changed, they just think less of Asian women. And this unacknowledged lack of respect for Asian women feeds into a new form of superiority complex where they are now elevated by standing on the heads of Asian women whom they have no respect for. Now it's very likely there are two parts to your being. The part that wants to find true love, an authentic connection with someone you find, you know, stunningly sexually attractive, interesting, funny, and you know, actually build a life with. But you also hear, hmm, so you're saying I can rattle everything inside? I, I like the sound of that shit. And you know, I can resonate with that, okay? I'm a man, but this is just a word of caution to try to be better and do better as a person. Just because someone will let you crawl up inside their vagina, it doesn't mean that you should. No, the elusive treasure that is relational and sexual fulfillment is not to be found by wading knee deep in Asian snatch. I also wanna make clear that I am not a dating coach, anything like that, nor I, although that being said, I'm also not a Farang 20 years deep coming off the back 
back end of two divorces and five long-term relationships with multiple bargains, right? I get that. But I am a guy in my 30s who has lived in Thailand for one year and has had some exposure. So maybe, just maybe, I'm more closely related to your current situation than the old school Thorang. Now, a lot of foreigners coming here have some very funny misconceptions about Thailand. Right? They think that people in Thailand are poor or they're short or some other bullshit. Did you know that the median salary in Bangkok is about 200 pounds per month less than the UK? Just so you know, if you've never seen a Korean dude or a Chinese dude up close, and there are a lot in Thailand, they are absolutely fucking huge, huge. The cars on them, they are massive, okay? Now, although that being said, it is amazing to see how a small perceived increase in earnings that someone can find a new sense of arrogance and reinvented identity, which is grounded in highly short-term gratification and negative habit formation. And this negative habit formation, if you do it long enough, will then move from habits into permanent traits and negatively impact all of your future romantic relationships for years to come. But having said all of that, you can and nearly definitely will get more female attention in Thailand. So. Let's get to it. So I knew I was coming to Thailand about six weeks before my actual flight out here. And four weeks before coming out here, I decided to download Tinder. And here is what I did. I got a Tinder premium account, okay, and changed my location to Bangkok. I did this because A, I didn't know a single soul in Thailand, and it seemed like a pretty good idea or pretty good way to meet somebody before I came out. To a premium account is the only way to change your location, to actually be in the UK or anywhere else in the world and say you're here. And see, I didn't have the time to sit swiping, right? Blah, 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 doing that out, so I ain't got that time. And with that, you can actually just see who's already like you, right? Now, here's a few tips for anybody who is in the market for some tips. On your profile, try to include a selection of different outfits and scenery, okay? So summer clothes, winter clothes, etc. And another one is don't have pictures with lots of other people. You can do this, but make it very clear who you are. So first one you, second one you, third one with your mates, etc. So you know, you've got a few mates. But just don't make people work to find out who you are. And make it very clear on your profile what it is you're looking for, or at least point in that general direction, okay? I, if you're looking for a wife, I'd put looking to meet someone great to potentially build a life with. If you're looking to bang, I'd probably say something like looking to meet interesting people and see where it takes me, okay? Now, use basic English at least to start until you can understand their level of English. It will become clear after only a few message exchanges back and forth. However, if your first message is four sentences of confusing English, references and multiple questions, you're making it hard from the beginning for them, okay? And also, if you are somewhat of a catch by however you might want to define it, verify your account. I got lots of attacks uh, saying I was a scam account. I mean, fuck me, I love the compliment, right? But this was completely bizarre, didn't expect that. Uh, and if you're moving here or spending an extended period of time here, make that very clear too. There is a constant recycling of Western douchebag here for two weeks, hop on, try and get a bang when they're drunk messaging at 1 a.m. in the morning. And if you're here for longer than that, you are already separating yourself from those people and immediately represent yourself as a more alluring partner, right? Because you represent more long-term relationship viability. Having done this, I can share a few important tips or things to consider for yourself. A month is a long time to keep up a conversation in potentially broken English. Right? When you communicate, try to understand how you very likely use references or concepts which are relevant to where you are from. For example, you may reference something that is popular in your culture, that kind, of, or a current trending news story or some bullshit like that, or something that's celebrity, wherever it is, right? The culture here in general is very different from the West. So something to bear in mind, they just might not know what you're referencing. And also you might use slang or phrases that is second nature to you, but really make no logical sense. For example, you could reference something as being sick, like, oh, that's sick, meaning it's good, right? But it may be intuited as ill. Or you may say something like, don't beat around the bush. Now, we all know what this means, right? But this type of English just means nothing to the vast majority of even good English-speaking people here in Thailand. Now, this takes time and some self-awareness, right? Because we do it without even realizing it. But if you do do it too much, it's gonna make communicating very difficult. It will create insecurities with the person you're speaking with because they feel uncomfortable, they're not really getting what you're talking about. But also, they may even pretend to get it. They'll pretend to know what you're talking about when they don't. So you're in this strange, 
intersubjective space of confusion and, and no mutual resonance, right? I had a big trouble with this, saying things like, let's bop, let's bounce, let's get some munch. And I actually began to realize I speak barely any English at all. Even the other day I said, well, that idea went out the window. And out the window means nothing to a girl from Asia, right? Nothing. Also, big warning, and this is the filters. Filters are a real thing here, okay? And I would say most of the pictures that you see on these accounts have been heavily edited. So use a discerning eye to try to discern fact from fiction. So yes, I simply created a premium account, changed my location, optimized my profile, swiped and sent a couple of DMs. At that point, the ones you like, you may want to move to a different platform, IG usually, but potentially WhatsApp too. And here's a tip. Line is used here a lot more than WhatsApp. So it's very likely that if, you, if they already have WhatsApp, right, they've either previously or are currently messaging another Westerner, or as most people here use Line. Now that's not a definite rule, but is somewhat of a rule, right? And if you want to download Line and get a head start, great. Otherwise, IG can be a shout. But bear in mind, you will have multiple girls on your IG and you will need to do some clearing up of your profile at a later date. And yeah, that's all I did and needed to do to have a thousand girls say what they wanted to meet me before I even came to Thailand. So why even date in Thailand? Now, in this video, I wanna provide something a little bit different to what's out there. There are enough videos of older dudes talking about how their Thai girlfriends will give them foot rubs and clean their clothes and cook their food and take better care of them than women do in the West. Because there are enough of these videos out there, I wanna go a little bit deeper and provide you with a slightly different perspective. Finding people to date in Thailand is really the easy part of the process. The harder part is actually deciding if this is something you want to pursue. And there are a lot of pros and cons. The West is in a difficult place right now. And it's no secret that for men, it is a particularly troublesome time. There are enough videos about this, so I'm not gonna bore you about that. But I do think we should acknowledge some points that are central to this thing. Much of the pain men are feeling in the West is existential and comes from a point of, well, privilege, right? Only because the basic needs of men are largely met are we then in a position to worry about things like potential, meaning, purpose, and essentially mental flourishing. But having said this, the pain and torment is real, and this doesn't mean that there are not very real prejudices against men right now, because there are. And these reactions are overcorrections, which are done by well-intentioned, but ignorant people, unfortunately. But one of the primary issues for me is the counterproductive way in which females in the West are selecting their sexual partners. Now, of course, women can and can pick how they want and they do pick how they want, right? You know, that's their limited freedom of choice, but it would appear matter is the only thing that matters. And net worth really is being used as a measure of your worth as a human being. And this we know is spiritually and psychologically opposed to emotional well-being. In the West, if you drive a nice Merc or BMW, it is gonna increase the caliber. And I apologize for the hierarchical ranking of females in such a judgmental way, but I do. If you drive a nice Merc or a Beamer, it will increase, say, the attractiveness of the potential sexual partners that you're going to attract to you. Now, there is an argument to be made that if that is how your partner is going to select you, then that isn't the partner for you. And I am with you, my dude. I am with you on that 100%. But in the West, we do find ourselves in the strange cycle of material consumerism as a means to elevate our way up a mating hierarchy. So you end up craving a better paying job to earn more money, to spend on things, get into car leases as a means to attract a sexual partner. And in exchange, you're sacrificing your freedom and ability to pursue meaning in life. A fast car is no adequate substitute for your freedom, in my opinion. And similar to the Irish elk, this was an animal who was that was sexually selected into extinction. Their antlers were size selected. So the bigger the antlers, the more female attention that they got. And their antlers got so long that the rack just got too big for the body and they were just unable to support their heads. And essentially they were sexually selected into extinction. And imagine if females solely selected based on your dick size, right? And after 10,000 iterations, your dick became so big, there was no more blood left to go to your brain. And this is the same thing that's happening in the West. It's just with our wallets, it seems. And in Thailand, really, or anywhere else you might be considering moving to, there is still a hierarchy, okay? You simply step off of one ladder in the West and you climb onto another ladder in the East. 
It is just leaning against a different wall. However, the rungs of that ladder are not the same. And this isn't to say that if you're poor, you should come to Thailand and date. Or if you're out of shape, come to Thailand and date or anything like that, right? You should always try to maximize your potential in this incarnation. But as men, maybe we want to take up the role as the provider, right? The breadwinner in this relationship. And maybe you want to be in a position to take financial care of your partner. And, you know, with such a lower cost of living in Thailand, this can be a reality. For me, I despise the idea of a deferred life plan. Okay, so just thinking that I'm gonna do something in the future. I've always wanted to be someone who could have their cake and eat it too. And that's one of the very reasons I actually moved to Thailand in the first place. And for me, I want, I want freedom to pursue things of meaning, but also have a life of freedom. And in Thailand, you can realistically have a child, sustain a partner, and have outsourced house help with things like cleaning and cooking within your realistic financial grasp, right? And, you know, is this to say I'd never change a nappy or get up in the middle of the night or drive the kids to school? No, you know, I will do those things, but I also want to continue living a life of freedom and have enough mental and physical space to pursue things of parallel meaning. Now, this is a large part of why I intend on residing in Thailand or at least cheaper parts of Asia in general. And could I afford all of the above in the West? Yes, you know, I, I realistically, I probably could, but it would cost more. And as such, it would infringe on my freedom in a way that is too much that it would encroach on my values. And this for me is one of the primary appealing factors about living in the East. When you come to Thailand, you do seem to step across and up the mating hierarchy. There are a lot of girls who think that Westerners who come to Thailand to meet women are losers back home. And yes, lots of dudes, and of course, you know, maybe some of the older dudes, etc., very likely don't get much attention from, say, young women back home and might be judged as losers. Okay, but it is in part this ranking system which propagates the problem of dating in the West anyway. And yes, this ranking system does exist in Thailand. But here you do step across but up this hierarchy. And despite lots of Thai women very much detesting Western men, there are also, you know, I would say a disproportionate amount who find a Western guy a desire object. It is like the extremes on either end. The desire and hatred for men are more extreme in Thailand, I'd say, but also the middle ground is significantly more interested from men or in men from the West, meaning the median female picked out of a population would likely be more interested and of a higher caliber, how we want to choose that cocktail of judgment, than in the West. You know, in the West, we go on sunbeds to get tanned. In the East, they take drips and supplements to whiten their skin. It always appears the grass is greener on the other side. And sometimes the same can be said in finding a potential partner. But there is an elephant in the room we do need to address, and this is do Thai women only want you for your money? There is no doubt that women in Thailand desire you in part at least for your money, but it is more a case of how much. When you meet someone new for the first time, or at least first few times even, you know very little about someone. So what is it about that person you're desiring? When you've recently met someone, you desire the image in your mind about who you think that person is, but you know nothing about them yet. It's merely a projection of of the different aspects of your own being are projecting onto them. You don't know their level of psychological development, their spiritual viewpoint, their views on race, religion, politics, anything really. You don't know anything about them. You know a finite amount and use this to extrapolate out an entire being that exists solely within your mind. Now, I've been with a girl cheering and suddenly she might drop the N-bomb and I thought, whoa. Damn! You know, this thing went left real quick because who they were and who I thought they were were not the same thing, they didn't match up. But when it comes to money, yes, many Thai girls will see you're from the West and presume you have more money. And yes, I am sure that, you know, they want a little piece of that, right? Because the money, it represents security. And for those who have had little financial security, in their life, this is an alluring thing. And I can speak about that from, you know, personal circumstance, but it is really more just for you to say, you know, if we think about it, is it really more just for you to say you wanting a piece of that ass, right? Is more moral than a female desiring securely, you know, financial sustenance in you? You know, is that more just? But the thing is, money and wealth is, as I've already mentioned, a contributing factor in selecting a mate in the East or the West. And for me, it's more a case of how is this weighted? If money is weighted to be 20% of the total allure or necessary requirements for a sexual partner by a woman in the West and 50% in Thailand, then that is a big difference. 
But these are vast overgeneralizations, and these percentages will morph into an average. But it is important to never lose the individual in the collective statistics. An average is never the individual. For me, the primary thing is, is money the only thing they're interested? And how can you find out if actually there are other reasons the partner wants? Well, wants you. We all want love, right? We all want to feel worthy. We all want to feel desired. So it's important that over time, you use your intuition and better judgment to discern if you're wanted more for who you are and less for what you have. Loose link sip ship. So my advice, don't even discuss money. Don't even bring it up and observe if they do, when they do and how they do it. And you have to use your better judgment to discern if these are red flags and if you want to continue seeing them. And if finding out about your financial situation came prior to many of the other things they tried to find out about you, which would constitute you being a good life partner. How early did money come up in the conversation, you know, before they asked about, you know, specific jobs, where you've been, what you like, your hobbies, your family, how quickly did that come up? And you can use that as a indicator of their interest. Okay, so now let's touch on getting screwed over both emotionally and financially. It appears in Thailand, there are two primary financial traps or pitfalls people fall for. This is just from what I've seen. And one is sponsorships and the other is building houses. Now, sponsorship refers to where a girl has multiple different guys on the go, right? Each thinking they are the real boyfriend and sending a couple of hundred bucks a month back just to help them out, right? But often they have multiple guys doing the same thing. I mean, I've heard horror stories where someone had a girlfriend they might have lived with, but they had five overseas sponsors all sending them money. I mean, it's mental. And you know, if you truly fell for a girl and found this out, it would be both painful and expensive, which makes it even more painful, right? So this is something to watch out for. Now, how can you find out if this is the case? I mean, it's tricky. And other than going through their bank statements, you'll have to use your better judgment to discern this. You know, that is a tricky one, right? You just have to use your better judgment and intuition. The other trap is building a house on somebody's land. As a foreigner, you have no rights to ownership of a land in Thailand. So if your girlfriend has land and you pay to build a house, you have no ownership or rights to this house. This happens a lot. And a lot of guys sink 20 to 40 bags into a house they're never going to own. At the time, of course, this seems like a great deal. A house for 40K, obviously that seems like a great deal, right? But the foundations you're building that house on are not the concrete or the earth the land resides on. Okay, but the foundations of your romantic relationship with your Thai partner, because your ownership rights to that house are as concrete as your relationship, and that is it. So if you want to invest, buy a condo. Okay, so let's talk lady boys. No doubt if you're from the West and you tell people you're going to Thailand, you will be hit with a barrage of going to bang a ladyboy, are we? That's a bit of cock, eh? <laughs> like you're gonna get it, right? There's pretty much the immediate response from 95% of people in the West. And actually, obviously this, this can be quite funny, right? And I did have one friend inform me before I came out, the best way to determine if someone is really a man or a woman is to punch them in the stomach because the way they react naturally is gonna determine if they are a man or a woman. Use that if you wish, as you wish. And uh, I mean, the, look, the frequency of ladyboys is just one of the many differences Thailand has to the West. And the fact that you get hit with this is a representation of, you know, others' limited perceptions about the country. You know, you may wake up in cold sweats one night where from a, from a nightmare where you've taken a girl home only to find out all too late that they have a giant swing dot. And, you know, yes, there are ladyboys in Thailand. Yes, there are prostitute ladyboys in Thailand. Yes, you will see five foot four inch Western dudes with six foot two ladyboys and just have this, you know, horrific display of internal mental imagery dance over your awareness about what is happening with a dude this big and a ladyboy this bad me. Yeah, it's, uh, well. but anyway, but my experience has been thus. Plastic surgery is big here in Thailand, and you could mistakenly connect with, say, a ladyboy on Tinder, for example. However, from my experience, they'll generally put this in their bio, okay? Remember, they're not trying to trick you, or at least most of the time, most of the people are not trying to trick you. They don't want to be, you know, same as you, they don't want to be in this awkward encounter where you react angrily and potentially violently because you've been deceived by them. In fact, if you do connect with a ladyboy or speak with a ladyboy, often they're going to be very upfront. You now, one common practice 
is that they would have crafted this long message and they'll send you a long copy and pasted message once you first connect with them, explaining their story, that they're a lady boy, where they are in their personal journey and what they're looking for in terms of a romantic relationship. So it's very upfront. Now, considering this, please do, you know, try to feel compassion for their situation. Imagine being encaged in a body, right? That feels foreign to you. And there is so much social stigma and prejudice. You need to create this long message and, you know, send this the first time you meet with someone. And they, they craft this long message, pouring their heart out, trying to explain their situation. They send it to someone the first time they connect. And most of the time, these are going to get ignored, right? We have to feel compassion for now, gender here in Thailand is not like the confused mental states of the West, right? There is no indoctrination in the school systems like there is in the West with wokeism, wokeism running rampant, right? But here it does feel just that little bit more genuine that there is this hardware, software incom incompatibility. You know, the software is female, but the hardware it was installed on is male. And it just feels much more natural. And to see this gender fluidity widely accepted in a culture where it has blossomed quite naturally is, in my opinion, a far more compassionate society to coexist in. And often this can come to light when you go to the outskirts of Thailand, away from the more cosmo cosmopolitan areas, right? You may go to an island, for example, a little bit away and see a lady boy, but they aren't in a location where plastic surgery and hormone replacement are easily accessible. Or, you know, very likely they're not in a financial situation to change their biological situation. And thus you have, for all intended purposes, what looks to be a manly man with long hair, but inside is a woman's personality. You know, acknowledge your judgment, acknowledge the judger, acknowledge your prejudice and transcend it with love and compassion for another human being. For really, who am I? or you to be talking about lady boys from either a place of authority or judgment. Behind our socially constructed gender roles, our masculine and feminine tendencies, we are above all human, having a human experience. Now, all this being said, I was warned about certain lady boys being pickpockets and my friend was indeed robbed by a lady boy on a night out. So make of that what you will. So let's finish with some extremely important points. Moving to Thailand and subsequently dating in Thailand presents an opportunity for you both to discover yourself and reinvent yourself. Who could you be as a man with all of your baggage, your cultural programming and regular human interactions removed? And who will you reinvent anew when you're here? Will it be a good man or a charismatic bad man? Lying and cheating is always bad, whether you're doing it to a Western girl or an Asian girl. In Thailand, you will figure out who you truly are, both sexually and morally. With a BJ, within five minutes walk and $40 away, will you succumb to the desire? Sex hungry men will always be prone to external influence or sabotage by any female attention. I have absolute faith that if I wanted to, I could meet another female and they value me. And it's because I have this self-confidence within myself, not requiring validation from members of the opposite sex, I'm able to control myself. And by, by having this self-control, I'm able to maintain a positive relationship. So if you're thinking about dating in Thailand, you know, yes, you can use the information I've shared here. But more importantly, the best way to get others to love you is to love yourself. Cultivate the strength of spirit and depth of character that is truly alluring to a potential partner. Exercise and get in shape. This will automatically elevate you up the mating hierarchy. But instead, don't do it for others. Maximize your earning potential. Again, this will lure more attractive and a larger quantity of potential mates. But again, do it for you. And even if after all this, you end up getting screwed over, shining out of the darkness of the pain you may feel with a bright beacon of self-respect you still have for yourself, knowing you were a good, honest man. Be a source of light in a dark universe. Be meaningfully good in an all too mean world.